Welcome to the Empowered Podcast with Deanna Merlino, a personal development show where I will be sharing with you just how to transform yourself into the best version of you, both inside and out. From fitness and nutrition to business and positive mindset work, I'll be showing you exactly how to live your best life. I'll be keeping it as real and raw as it gets. So get ready to peel back the layers and really transform yourself under the surface because nothing is better than finding your purpose and living this life as your true, authentic self. Go grab my day by design editable worksheet so that you guys have something to follow along and hit all of your daily goals. Stay on track, push yourself to be even more successful and easily get everything put together in one place. Go download it by joining my monthly newsletter for free at www.dianamerlinofit.com. Welcome back, Empowered Fam. I'm excited to be with you guys as usual today, but we are going to talk about uh, the compound effect. And some of you may have read the book by Darren Hardy that's called The Compound Effect, Um, but that is a book that I have been reading. And there are just some really great examples that I just felt obligated to share with you guys. Um, Just some things that you can do that are super tangible, but when you just get it broken down and explained to you in this way, I think that it can be pretty profound. We all are especially like in this culture and this like busyness and always having to be doing something. I feel like some of these simple but extremely effective ideas can kind of get pushed to the wayside. Like I think sometimes we feel that we need to have one big jump or like one grandiose thing, but that is just not the case. Like the easy proven way to successfully reach a goal and whatever it is that you're trying to do is breaking things down into simple little chunks. You guys have heard me talk several times about chunking, and that's essentially what today is going to be about. But using what Darren taught in this book had just such perfect examples. So there's two that I'm going to share with you guys today. So um, a compound effect essentially is the principle of reaping huge rewards from a series of small, smart choices. So doing the right thing over and over and over and over again, no matter how uh, boring that may sound or how boring it may seem, sometimes it doesn't always have to be sexy. It just has to be a consistent, easy, bite-sized chunk. So you might have heard of the... um about the story about the penny. So I'm just going to go ahead and start reading from some of the sections of the book here. So if you were given the choice between a penny that was going to multiply every day for 31 days or choosing $3 million right off the bat, most people are going to choose that $3 million. Like when we think of a penny, we're like, yeah, why would I ever like that's not going to equate to anything near that without really sitting down and looking at it. That would seem like the smart choice. But I'm going to go ahead and just like burst your bubble and tell you that's the wrong choice. But let's really just look at what that really looks like. And it'll make sense as to what I'm completely talking about today. So if you've heard this before, just bear with me. We're just going to go over it again. So let's say you take that that cash. You got three million bucks in your hand. You're excited. You can't wait to spend it. And your friend decided to take the penny. So On day five, your friend only has 16 cents. You still have your $3 million or whatever you haven't spent as yet, right? On day 10, they have $5.12. You still have that $3 million. After 20 days with 11 days left, that penny has multiplied to $5,243. So it still looks like you made the right choice. And then that's where that magic of the compound effect starts to come in. At the end of that 31 days, that penny multiplying will be $10,737,418.24. So after that 31 days, it has more than tripled your value of that $3 million. So this is an example of why consistency over time is so important. On day 29... You had your 3 million and that penny was worth 2.7 million. Within just a couple of days, it quadrupled. Like sometimes we think that if we just do a huge thing, we're going to get immediate 
results. We are in an age of wanting that instant gratification. And while sometimes that's going to work out for your benefit, most times it's not going to. You're going to get burnt out. You're going to not be able to keep doing those large movements or those large chunk, large chunks over and over and over. Sometimes when you just break it down into small, easy to complete, easy to repeat little things over and over and over again, that is where you're going to find success in the long term. And you're also going to be able to maintain it. It's like that story of the rabbit and the turtle or the pear and the turtle, whatever. And like you're sprinting to the finish line versus going nice and slow and consistently trotting along. At the end of the day, the turtle wins. Like the person who went nice and slow and consistent was the one who won. So next thing I'm going to dive in like a little deeper. I just wanted to give you guys a quick little bite-sized story. But we're going to compare three different friends. So the first friend is someone who, well, first, let's take it back a bit. All three friends are, you know, they've grown up together. They live in the same neighborhood. They make essentially like the same amount of money. And they're all what you would think of as happily married, have good friends. Like on paper, everyone has the same um, opportunity to do something different with their life. The first friend is consistently putting the blame on others, consistently, woe is me when anything goes wrong, Um, just consistently not looking at themselves for the results of things, just always complaining about, oh, my coworker did this. Oh, my boss did this. Oh, I was late today because of the traffic instead of leaving a little earlier. That kind of person, you know who I'm talking about. You've probably been them. You may still be them. If this like hurts a little bit, just take it as like a nice wake up call. And trust me, I've been that person. And sometimes I can even still be that person. I'm only human. But then there's the second person who... um you know, decided that they want to do a little more for themselves. They start listening to podcasts and uh, motivational videos, and they're reading 10 pages a day, and they're constantly looking up ways to be successful, and they'll implement one thing off of that list. They have open conversations with their wife and their children and or husband, whatever. Um, and there's there's that second person. And then the third person is just comfy in what they're doing, don't think that they need to change. And they're just, you know, worried about living their best life. So those are the three different people. So the first guy is going to kind of consistently do what he does this entire story. He's just going to woe is me, put the blame on others. It is what it is. The second guy, he's going to go ahead. He decided that aside from adding in the reading and listening to the positive motivational stuff and cutting out just binge watching TV that he wants to lose or cut out 125 calories per day. That's not huge. That could literally be switching mayo on your sandwich to mustard. That could be switching a can of pop for some water or something like that. Um, That could be not having that second cookie after dinner. So just very determined to just make positive, tiny, uh, consistent changes. And the third guy who's living his best life decides that he wants to have a little more fun. So he is, he adds a TV into his house. He starts being able to play his video games on better HD quality and starts wants to learn to cook. So they're like, we're going to follow the food network or whatever, you know, food channel you want to watch. And he really loves the cookies and the desserts and the cheesy casseroles and all of those things. And he actually enjoys cooking. So now he's consistently doing it, likes to bake and is making all the stuff for his family and everyone seems happy. He's thinking like, I've done a good thing. So there's these three guys that consistently keep doing this over and over and over. After five months, there are really no perceivable differences that exist. Like five months of that consistent um, doing the same, being negative, nothing's really changed. Add, cutting out the 125 calories, nothing's really changed. Adding in 125 calories, nothing's really changed. At the end of 10 months, we still don't really see any huge differences. But they can all three of them consistently keep doing the same thing. 
at the end of 18 months, there's starting to be a slight change. There's starting to be some measurable differences in each of their appearances. It's at 25 months when things start to really be noticeable and measurable. After 27 months, there's a huge change. And by the 31st month, similar to the penny story, the change is startling. The guy who was adding the 125 calories per day is now overweight. The guy who was cutting 125 calories 125 calories per day is trim and fit. He was also adding in some extra walking and that kind of stuff in there. By simply cutting 125 calories a day in 31 months, that gentleman lost 33 pounds. Well, the guy who was living his best life has now gained that 33 pounds. So now that guy is 67 pounds heavier than his friend who was losing the weight. That is a huge difference. So to break that down, that makes sense where those numbers come from. 31 months equals 940 days. 940 days times 125 calories per day is 117,500 calories. It normally takes about 3,500 calories to burn a pound of fat. So 117 117,500 calories divided by that 3,500 calories is 33.5 pounds. So just to give you guys like a understanding of where those numbers came from. So aside from the weight, let's break that down a little deeper. You know, before we even do that, just think of that for a quick second. Like some of you might be thinking, I don't want to do something for 31 months in order to see the result. But if you do those little things, like how hard is it to stop drinking a can of soda? How hard is it to not eat the cookie? How hard is it to actually go walk a couple thousand miles? How hard is it to just add in these simple little things? Not hard. They're so simple that sometimes it'd be easy to not do them. So that's understandable too. But when you just make the choice that you want to make a change long term that is consistent and is going to be maintainable, this is how you do it. That exact story. That's how I want to get really like detailed with this for you because when it clicks, this is how you're really going to make lifestyle changes. So let's break that down even deeper than just the weight because more things happen there. So the gentleman that lost the weight that was doing all the things, in that time, he has invested in over a thousand hours of reading books and listening to self-improvement videos or audios in the car, the podcast, all the things. You've heard me talking about that. The Rolling University where I listen to podcasts in my car unless it's the weekend. So by putting his newly gained knowledge into practice, he earned a promotion at work with a solid raise and his marriage is thriving. The other gentleman who was living his best life, eating the cookies and the cheesy casseroles, He is unhappy at work and his marriage is on the rocks. And we're going to get into why. The other guy, I don't talk about him as much because he's just miserable all the time and busy blaming the whole world. And when you're busy blaming everyone else, instead of looking in the mirror, you never get anywhere. It's like a car that's stuck in the mud that's just constantly spinning its tires. So like, we're not going to focus on him because he's just kind of there existing in his own misery. He's off by himself. So this thing, this is it though. Like this is the power of the compound effect. That little bite-sized chunk over and over again is either going to affect you greatly or harm you greatly. So let's dive into what those, what their lives look like now. So the one who is busy eating all of that food and playing the video games and watching the crime series and not filling himself with positive things, his life's not looking so great right now anymore. He loved making all those muffins muffins that he learned from the Food Channel. His family was proud and happy at first that he was doing the things that he loved. And the problem is, is that he started eating a little bit too much of his own stuff when no one was looking. So aside from the weight, more importantly, what's going on internally and the effect of it is much worse. Not only the book doesn't talk about this, but I'm going to go ahead and say that he probably has high blood pressure and like high cholesterol at this point too. Might even be pre-diabetic with all the sugar and everything that he's been consistently eating every day for 31 months. So at this point though, because of all that extra food that he is eating, especially late at night, he starts to get sluggish. He starts sleeping like crap. 
He starts to wake up groggy, which then makes him cranky. The crankiness and the sleep deprivation begins to impact his work performance. And he's feeling less productive, not hitting his numbers at work, not doing his sales calls, not doing anything extraordinary and like putting out that extra effort that he used to do. And his boss starts to notice and his boss starts yelling at him. And then he's in a bad mood when he leaves work. And now he doesn't want to go to work anymore. And now he's taking it all out on the people around him, which are his wife and his children. He is dissatisfied with his job and his energy levels are low and he is just groggy and crabby and tired. So all of this makes him want to what? He's going to turn to comfort food to make himself feel better, which in turn, he's eating more calories. Let me tell you, it is not hard to eat 125 calories. So he's likely eating more than that every day, as you probably are, as most people probably are. So in 31 months, you might gain a heck of a lot more than 33 and a half pounds. So that overall lack of energy is making him less likely to want to go on those nice walks with his wife that he used to or the long talks that they used to have because he doesn't feel like it. She's starting to miss the time that they had together and starts to withdraw. They stop doing things together. They're not getting the fresh air. They're not getting the exercise. They're not getting the endorphin releases, all of those things that kept their relation happy, relationship healthy and happy. And now she's starting to find unhappiness in their marriage. So now she is turning to uh, working longer at work, finding more friends to hang out with and is spending less time at home. She's also starting to realize that like she wants to do things that makes her happy since she's not getting it from him. So she's working out more. She's feeling great. She starts to even look better. So now she's getting attention from men as well. And while this wife has zero interest in cheating on him, The husband starts to realize the changes that she's making for the better and starts to become jealous and just concerned with her doing or looking better, feeling better than he is. And instead of looking at himself and making a change, he is now just taking it out on her. They're arguing all the time. And here's the thing. If he had been watching personal development, if he had been listening to personal development instead of the food channel and instead of those crime series, and none of that stuff is terrible, guys. It's just making a point of like consistent poor habits and what you choose to do with them. If he had listened to those positive things, he would have known that a way to change all of this is to look at yourself and change yourself for the better. But he didn't learn that. He didn't know that there was another way. He didn't realize the mistakes that he was making. So now he is currently flushing his life and his marriage right down the toilet. Whereas the other guy who is doing all those good things and filling himself up is consistently becoming more successful in life consistently building and growing the relationships around him with his wife and his friends, consistently learning and looking for new ways to add income, looking for new ways to build a business or have a side hustle or how to deal with the normal stresses and arguments that come up with life because they're inevitable. He knows how to deal with them better. And then there's still that third other guy that we barely talked about because he just doesn't really matter. He's still busy struggling, blaming the world, and he's not going anywhere. So I really hope that explaining those three stories very deeply, honestly, I hope it sat with you in a way where like you start self-reflecting because that's the point of any of this. It's okay if you are any of those of the more negative people, because now that you're aware, you can make a change. I want you to be the one who is successful, the one who is healthy, the one who is exercising, the one who has great relationships, the one who is successful, getting raises, you know, just learning how to communicate, being a productive member of society, always improving and never staying stagnant. That is who I want you to be. So if there's anything that you take from today, I want you to realize that it doesn't always have to be these giant, huge, insanely extreme jumps. Just start small. And even if you stay small, that's fine. Do one more thing than you did yesterday. Do 1% more than you did yesterday. Save one penny more than you did yesterday. And all that is going to compound and all of that, the effect of it is going to exponentially raise your chances and the outcome of success in every aspect of your life. So I just want to end today with what is one thing that you can implement daily that you can do long-term that is going to help you be more successful, be happier, feel better, be more productive. I hope you guys have a great day and I cannot wait to see you guys next week. Have the best week. I love you always. Take care. 
Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. If you want to find out more, you can follow me on Instagram at Empowered with Deanna and my personal page, Fit Deanna Lolita. You can also visit me on my website, which is DeannaMerlinoFit.com. Make sure that whatever platform you guys are listening on, please rate and subscribe. And this means so much to me. It's going to help get me out there to help so many other people. I'm so grateful that you're here with me on this journey of wellness and self-empowerment. I cannot promise that it will always be easy, but I do know that it will always be worth it. Stick with me and together, let's start living as the version of us that we were meant to be because the world is waiting for your gifts and you deserve to live the life of your wildest dreams and beyond. So friends, let's get empowered.